What's up, Dart people? We are on the Dart Language Tour talking about exceptions and catching them, okay? Um, really, you can think of this as a try-catch block. Uh, it only says catch here, but it's really, you you create this, this block of code, this structure, where you can try, you can catch, you can re-throw errors, you can do something, no matter if there's an exception or not, called finally. Um, this this is like the format of code you would use if someone says, "Hey, you wrote this code, but it doesn't have any error handling." And you think, "Well, how do I how do I handle errors?" This is this is the 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 format or the structure you use to quote unquote handle them or do things with them. You catch them, you um, you know whatever uh, the business rules require at the time. Okay, so. Let's uh, let's get into it. We may cover finally in here. We'll see. Um, so catching or capturing an exception stops the execution from propagating. Earlier in the exception section, this top level section, um, they talked about when an exception or error happens, it typically suspends the isolate from running and the program that it came from. Okay, and that's why things crash. Um, so we want to be able to handle exceptions um, before they stop, uh, before they continue propagating until the program blows up uh, or completely fails. Okay. Um, sometimes we do want to rethrow an exception, um, but if you catch it or capture it, um, handle it, um, then it's the it, it's it's not going to continue propagating okay so you can also um, another word they say is you want to swallow the errors okay um, that's that's something else you hear so catching capturing uh, handling the error not so much that's more like what are we going to do with it but ca catching capturing and swallowing the error means you you stop the exception from propagating bubbling up to the uh, original caller um, so that the user sees you know a big red error message. Okay, catching an exception gives you a chance to handle it. Ah, right, so now we have error handling like this. Um, these are just some uh, contrived sort of examples they have here. I mean, mine are contrived too, but we would have to define these, um, these functions for this to work. But if we just read it, um, we have this try catch block. It looks like an if else statement kind of, right? You have this if sort of block up here where you, you start the condition or the um, the scope of what you're doing. In this case, we're error handling. Uh, this is what we're gonna try to do first. Uh, this is actually considered the catch clause even though there's no catch keyword. There is this on keyword. And this is where we specify the type of exception. Okay, now remember, you can throw any type of object in. You can throw like a regular string, you can throw an object object, you can throw the class, you can throw an instance of a class. Um, and, and this is just the type that we are uh, catching. You could almost think of this like try breed more llamas. If the error type, if we get an error type and that error type is this one here, then, then go do this other thing, okay? So it's it's just a nice language feature to really just have like an if else uh, block for errors specifically, okay? Um, yeah, so let's look at um, a little example. I carried this over from last time. So inside main, uh, which is the entry point to our program, we have defined a function and then we call that function. It's called give me five. It takes an integer, uh, and then we have the switch case statement. When we're given five, we say, you gave me five. And then we break out of that. Otherwise, we wanna throw an error, okay? And what we're throwing here is a not five failure. And you'll notice I, I declared this class up here outside of main called not five failure, and it implements exception. This is typically what how you'll write your code. Uh, when you want to create a certain error class. Okay, um, notice that we're not using 
a try block. So if I if I wrote my code like this, someone could say to me, "Hey, you don't have any error handling around this um, around this code." Um, so I, I I came from the Ruby world. Um, what we would typically do is have a begin block. We would have an end, and then um, what we would do is maybe uh, rescue an error. Okay, so in addition to catching, capturing, swallowing, we're rescuing an error. Um, so I might have like a runtime error or something like that. Um, and then we have this special notation like so. And then I think it's just on a, on a new line, we're able to, you know, do something with that. So this is kind of like a try catch block in, but in Ruby is what it looks like. Begin, rescue, uh, so forth and so on. Okay. Um, right. Okay, so if I try to run this right now, I want to show you something. So it says uncaught error, and what that means is we don't have an error, error handling. Uh, there's no try catch block. Uh, so it's an uncaught error. We said give me five, but we passed in six, so we throw the not five failure, uh, and it listed it here, not five failure. Okay, that's that's kind of cool. Um, notice that this is just the class itself. It's a reference to this class up here. I didn't create a new instance of it, okay? That is a new instance of this class. If I do it now, it's still gonna be uncaught, but now it'll be an instance of a not five failure. So you can, you can do it both ways. I'm gonna show you why in a little bit, why you might not wanna do it uh, a different way, okay? So someone says, hey, you're not handling uh, any errors. And so we go, oh, okay. I read in the Dart language tour that you can use a try catch block. Uh, so let's do that. We'll have try, open in curly braces. Now we say give me five, okay? So this give me five is wrapped in a try block. Um, and then on this particular type, this not five failure, we'll print, you didn't give me five. Okay, let the user know why. Uh, so let's run this. Okay, so now notice it says uncaught error. Well, didn't we just use a try catch block? We, we should have caught it, right? Um, this is kind of tricky because if you forget to put parentheses on this error, or sorry, on this exception, I'm gonna be very specific when I say exception versus error. If I slip up, forgive me. Um, but on this exception, if you don't uh, use these, uh, uh, you know, braces or whatever. I don't think you can call. Um, it, it's yeah, it just doesn't work. <laughs> okay, so now we threw an instance, and on the type, so so the not five failure, we're matching on a type. Okay, so throw the instance, even though you can throw the class object itself. If you're going to use a try catch block, you really need to throw an instance so that you can match on the type. Okay, so now we're saying that. Um, something that, that would be nice, for example, if I say new, not five failure, um, and I put, put this here, I get that we there's an unnecessary new keyword, okay? Um, but I was doing something earlier. Let me see something real quick. No. I forget what I was doing now. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, yeah, this is what I wanted to show you. Okay, <laughs> so the new keyword when you're creating an instance of a class, um, you know, it's kind of redundant at this point. You don't need to use it. It was an old Dart feature, and now you just make it look like you're instantiating the class with parentheses on the end. But the nice thing is, thing is, like, if you use the new keyword, it it would have either worked because we would have remembered to do that, right? Um, but if we, if we still like said new class, it, we would have gotten a better error message that says, hey, we expected this after this. 
Okay, we expected this this opening curly brace, um, and then we go. Oh, we fix it. Okay, so we're going to throw an in, a new instance of this class that implements exception, um, and then we're going to match on that type and print. You didn't give me five. Everything works. Uh, unfortunately, without the new keyword, if you forget to use that uh, parentheses, you could get stuck here for a little bit and really be scratching your head like, why is this not catching? Okay, so remember. Throw the instance, match or catch on the type. Okay, cool. That that is what I really wanted to show there. Um, let's see what is next. Um, I want to show you that because not five failure implements exception, we could just have matched on exception. Now this would match on any type of exception. And when I say any type, I mean any subclass, anything that implements exception. Okay, so I can run that again. You didn't give me five because an instance of not five failure is ultimately a child of exception. Okay. So that's um, that's something you can do there as well. Um, you can always specify the type and this is like the most top level type. Um, in, in the Ruby programming language, they typically say don't match on the highest level exception, uh, but rather match on standard error or runtime error. Um, so that like more like server fault type errors, you're not you're not catching those. You want your program to fail in that case. Um, but I think it's okay to match on exception like this. Um, and notice that we're doing it in order. So out of llama's exception should implement exception, so we want to match on that first, uh, and then list this one second. So that order is very important. Okay. Uh, finally, not this finally, but in terms of the blocks that we're looking at, if you don't want to specify a type, but just catch the error, you can you can do so without specifying the on keyword. All right. So speaking of catch, right? Um, I see, did I read this paragraph? To handle code that can throw more than one type of exception, you can specify multiple catch clauses. Okay, we just showed that. The first catch clause that matches the thrown object's type handles the exception. Okay, so that's why the order is important. If the catch clause did not specify a type, that clause can handle any type of thrown object. Okay, so it's kind of like this default in a switch case statement uh, where it's the fall, th uh, the fall back um, final thing that you do in a switch case statement. Uh, likewise, if I just say catch, um, and then you can do, yeah, I'll show you that in a second. If I don't want to specify the type, I can always, um, like if I didn't know the, the type or something, I could say just catch all errors and then print you didn't give me five. Unfortunately, we get this error that says catch must be followed by an identifier or identifier identifier. That's a little weird. Like, what is what is this identifier thing? There, um, no types are needed. The first is given by on. The second, okay. This is not a very good, helpful message. Okay. So, what does this mean? This whole identifier, comma identifier. Well, catch takes an error and a stack trace, typically denoted by E and S. You can put it right next to catch, you can have a space between it, it doesn't matter. Uh, all that means is I can specify E like that, so now I can use the, um, the error itself. I can do uh, backslash N to put it on a new line, and now I can say S, and that'll give me a stack trace. So it's gonna catch all errors, it doesn't matter the type, um, provided I think even if it's not implemented, so I could say not implemented, you know, even if I spell it wrong, like some error is going to happen. Okay, this is a compilation error, so I lied. So Dart's, Dart's handling that for me there. Um, but if I, you know, have many different types of errors, um, you can see it prints what I wanted it to, and then it has the instance of not five failure. But then the stack trace also includes that, that instance of not five failure. Um, so I don't know if you always have to include both of those um, or just the second one. But anyways, they're positional arguments, error and stack trace. Um, that's what is meant when you see this little error pop up. 
that says catch must be followed by identifier or identifier identifier. Um, so I, I could use it without the stack trace. So now I no longer have access to that dollar uh, s variable. I just have e, um, and and this is where you don't want to throw a stack trace. You just want to give them a helpful error message. Okay, something like that. Okay, let's see, what else did I want to show you? Right, so they, they went into that. As the preceding code shows, you can use either on or catch or both. Use on when you need to specify the exception type. Uh, so for example, I could have kept the type here. On not five failure, catch E, okay. So I mean, it's gonna give me the same error message because it's, it's matching on type. And um, really, if you're matching on type, you don't have you don't have to use this catch statement. You can leave this out, okay? But if you want access to this error object, which is an instance of your not five failure, uh, there's a reason you might want to do that. Uh, for example, you might want to have a special uh, type of message. Maybe it's dynamic or something. So this class is it's just a class in in Dart, okay? So you can have properties like final. Um, string message and you can have a uh, const constructor so like not five failure uh, this dot message okay positional argument right so now when I throw this error it's an instance but it requires uh, let's say not five row and now I can print e dot message right Maybe I can't do that. E dot no dot message final string message. Do I need single quotes for this? I'm very confused. Now let me escape that apostrophe dot message. This is pretty wild. Instance of not five dot message. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I swear I did this earlier and it was it was fine. That's interesting. Okay um, Notice that I can catch with this little error object and I don't have to use it So it's just kind of like yeah, it gives me the the warning. Hey, you're not using it. So the catch clause can be removed um, Yeah, that's so interesting I don't know why Huh it's very interesting. Okay, see, I can use that there. Okay, so I can print e dot message there. I don't know why I couldn't do it earlier, unless Dartpad was like doing something weird, right? So there's my my first you know, just printing a string, then here's e dot message. So I have access to this sort of thing up here. Um, right, so if your class is, is more than just an empty object class like I had, you can do stuff like this, and then when you catch and bring that object down, you can have access to its um, its properties. It's still so weird, why? Yeah, I wonder if, do I need something like that? Huh. I didn't think I would need that. Usually you only use that for like um, uh, methods. Okay, so now if I get rid of this one. Okay. Yeah, really strange. Um, maybe with the stack trace? I don't know. I still don't know why, because I swear I, when I was playing around earlier, I was able to do that, but looks like you can't. So, uh, yeah. So that's that. Interesting. Okay. Things are still working. All right. Okay. So these are our identifiers, um, the error message uh, or the error object itself, um, and then a stack trace. Okay. Uh, the last thing it says here is to partially handle an exception while allowing it to propagate, use the throw keyword. All right, so what I'm gonna do, like this example they have is a function outside of main. 
So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to take all of, let me delete this. We're not using that anymore. Let's take this out of main. Okay, and format. Thank you. Um, okay. Now, let's see what we're doing is, is we're rethrowing, so we want to catch it here. Yeah. So it has its own try catch block, right? So suppose that um, there's some logic here that could could uh, could potentially break. It's kind of like whenever you're making a um, a network call and you want to make your function asynchronous, uh, you have to be thinking like, all right, what happens um, in the event that uh, an error happens? Well, I need to probably wrap everything in a try catch block. Okay. So now I can format it. No. Yep, I'm trying to do that. Now can I format? Yes. Okay. So if I wanted to, what I could do is I could finally just uh, rethrow the exception. Okay. So what I'm doing here is kind of contrived. <laughs> I've, I've created error handling for this this function. Um, I've said whenever the not five failure is thrown, um, it takes a message. That's still fine. Um, but what I'm doing is swallow the message or catch it here, and then just immediately rethrow it. But I, but I could do something like, um, you know, maybe you want to send an email or send a text or make a network call, make an API call, um, log something to the database, like maybe you're auditing um, your, your, you know, what's going through your code. Um, so um, let's say audit this call. So we're just printing it, but this could be something, you know, something else we want to do. Then we're going to rethrow it. So down here in main, uh, we're going to say, give me five, pass in six. It's going to throw not five failure. Uh, we're going to immediately catch that, print audit this call, and then rethrow. And then, uh, and yeah, so I could I could catch it again, right? And say, you didn't give me five, and then print the, the error message. So if I do this, I should get audit this call. You didn't give me five, print the error message. Yeah, and there it is. In the uh, the video on throw, I looked into uh, block, uh, the state management package block, and looked at how they handle some uh, sign up with uh, Google, or, or sorry, sign up with email and password, I think it was, and showed in there uh, how they handle certain exceptions. Okay, so there's usually like a list of different types of exceptions that they can catch on and do something with. Okay, so check that out if you haven't seen it. Um, yeah, let's let's just do finally and we'll close this section out. So finally, to ensure that some code runs whether or not an exception is thrown, use finally. If no catch clause matches the exception, the exception is propagated after the finally clause runs. Okay, so if no catch clause matches the exception is propagated after. Okay, so even if we rethrow, I think what we can do is we can have a finally block. Okay, and in Ruby this is else. Um, finally, we can print um, this always happens. Okay, so no matter if we if we go down this case or we go down this case we want to do something that always happens regardless of um, any any exception getting thrown okay so let's see what we got here so audit this call okay we caught it this always happens so we're going to do that and then down here we're catching it um, because we rethrow so even though we rethrow we're like you know, put on the brakes, let's do this first. Okay, 
Remember I wanted to rethrow? Okay, now let's rethrow and we can catch down here. Um, yeah, that is the gist of error handling uh, using try catch blocks. Uh, and finally, so in this example, we've used pretty much every keyword. Okay, we've implemented an exception. We've given it a custom message uh, so that we can instantiate this, this exception. We have a try catch block. So there's our try keyword. We've caught something here. We're throwing an error, um, which is just an instance of this class that implements exception. We, uh, again, we're able to catch it, print something. We, the rethrow keyword we used finally. Uh, down here, we're matching on a type. So we have pretty much used every single uh, part of exceptions. So I think that's a very good overview of, of how to catch uh, the exceptions. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so it looks like you can, you can use try and then finally, so you don't even have to catch the exceptions. Okay, so even if you don't catch an exception, um, this is how you can, um, right? Because what you could have here is you could have breed more llamas and then you could have clean llama stalls, just two lines of code. If breed more llamas raises an error, clean llama stalls isn't going to happen. Um, it's only when you wrap it in a try catch block. And maybe that's why they don't call it a try catch block because now you can just have a try finally block. You don't, you don't even have to catch. Um, okay, so thanks for spending some time with me on error handling. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and um, I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you.